Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And if you're tuning into this video as it's released, oh, congratulations to you. I hope I'm not interrupting your sleep schedule. As finally, the Asia server auction is going live, and day one is going to be for the T22 medium. Today, we've got the pleasure of watching PC Massey as they're going to show us whether the, the T22 medium is worth what Wargaming are going to be charging for it. So, the T-22 medium, it's the rarest of the tier 10 Soviet medium tanks. Uh, on the European server, there have been 3,000 battles, I believe, with T-22 mediums in them in the last 30 days. This vehicle, uh, is it a good one? Well, firstly, before I judge that, let's take a look to see how many uh, of these tanks will be available. And that is 15,000 on the European server and 7,500 on the North American server. And so I do expect these tanks will go very cheaply on the North American server as the, the population of the European server is far more than double. So Wargaming are going to find if those numbers are correct and at the, at the time of writing. Um, I'm just relying on the information that Wargaming have given to me about the auction. I do expect that the European price is going to be horrendously high because the European server has probably about 10 times the players of the North American server, if not more. And so the fact that I'm going to have to just squint again, that's what they're telling me, 7,500 on NA. Uh, I do expect these tanks will go incredibly cheaply on the NA server or they're just going to be very much more expensive on the EU server. Now, as this is an auction, I wonder if Wargaming are even going to having a, a starting price on this vehicle. I'm only going to be um, guessing here as to whether that's going to be the, the case. If there is a very low starting price, if you can get this thing for 5 million credits, totally worth it. You know what, I'd, I'd say this tank is probably worth up to about maybe like 8, 9 million credits. I would pay 9 million credits for it. Uh, it's, it's a good amount of grinding, but for something that's fairly rare, I think totally worth 9 million credits. Whether I would start to pay the ridiculous sums like I paid when I got this vehicle back in the day, I paid 77 million credits to be able to get my hands on this, but that was the first pressing, so to say, uh, or Wargaming squeezing its player base for the first time, releasing this vehicle uh, after it was originally available in the Rampage game mode where you had to uh, grind your way through 30 missions in kind of a battle royale game mode from, I think, was it 2016? Maybe even earlier. Uh, a bizarre event that the requirements were so hard that everybody just started to rig to be able to get this tank. So people were cheesing missions at like 2 or 3 a.m. Some people got banned, a lot of people didn't. And back then there was still team damage in World of Tanks. And everyone thought that everyone who got the T-22 medium was a cheater. And so they were actually start to damage them at the start of the battle. It's like, ha ha, you've rigged to be able to get this. You can't rig these shells that I'm going to fire at you even though you're on my team. Bizarre. There are actually even stories of the T-22 medium being mass reported. And somebody actually even got banned just for playing the vehicle. Although they may have earned it absolutely fair and square because of the, the mass report feature of people being so salty of the T-22 mediums. When the vehicle was first put into the game, it was completely broken, overpowered. Uh, Wargaming massively nerfed it, and then it became just uh, uh, something that gathered dust inside your garage from a competitive sense. And then Wargaming semi-buffed it before they released it in that auction where I mortgaged most of my vehicles. I sold a lot of tanks, I sold a lot of equipment, and then I bought it all back over pretty much what felt like a year. So... Honestly, ladies and gents, if you need credits right now, if you've got Watt Plus, you could demount equipment and sell it if there's no sale going on, and then grind the credits back and be able to purchase the credit, uh, purchase the equipment back when it's at a discount at half price. But would I recommend doing that? Well, you know what, if you get the vehicle for like 10, 20 mil, maybe definitely better to demount equipment and sell it if there's no sale going on, then repurchase it than to actually like purchase credits for gold that would be one of the most stupid things that you could ever do with your money but the the issue is is that you're going to put yourself in a deficit and world of tanks is not meant to be about borrowing credits crippling all of your vehicles with regards to equipment and then having to grind all the credits back as if it's like a full-time job and most people are doing that with their house and a, and a mortgage right you don't want to be doing that in world of tanks even if it is the uh, should we say the most sensible way to be able to get credits if you're at a pinch um, but 
darn can it make uh, what's meant to be a game feel absolutely painful. So, if you have to do that, up to you. I wouldn't recommend it. It did cripple me financially in World of Tanks for the best part of half a year or a year, and I felt just no fun playing all of the premium tanks I needed to to grind those credits back. So, we'll have to, you'll have to see how much it's going to cost. I expect it's going to be very cheap on the NA server. There was 7,500 of them. So, the T-22 Medium. Why is it good? Well, it's because of the armor. Do you see how PC Massey is just driving around with their tank angled at 45 degrees? Now, if you're in a normal vehicle, that would be a really stupid idea because you'd be over-angling and people would be able to pen your side. But the T-22 Medium, as you can see here, I'll tell you what, I'll just get a, fly, a flyby and then I can show you. You see this angling along here? If I fly inside the hull, you're going to see. It's angled sideways down there. So all of this angling with no flat part actually on the bottom of the vehicle means that if you overangle the vehicle either backwards or forwards, you can basically auto ricochet people as they shoot your tracks. And that is the strength of the tank. The PC Massey is going to show you uh, how to reverse side scrape in a T22 medium. And if you want to know more about this vehicle because you're sitting on the fence, I have a full tank review of the vehicle. You can find it on my channel and that will give you the full opinion as well as showing you the intricate armor angling uh, and tactics that you can have in this tank. The other things that are good about this vehicle apart from that is it does get full blooded heat pen of 330 so you can be able to compensate for uh, should we say the tank's relatively poor accuracy of 0.38 or just be able to bludgeon your way through some of the thicker armor in the game when you have to do that. It's going to be options for you and it's low profile it's pretty darn fast. It has really good camera rating as well, so you could get an exhaust vision system build on this vehicle for when you're playing on your Prokhorovka or Malinovka. But PC Massey here is going to show... Wow, that's a shot. <laughs> Look at that. Into the back of the VZ-55 that went outside their render distance. Now picking up a top gun. 50% more frags than the rest of their team combined, but uh-oh, they're not going to be a life of very much longer if that Jagdpanzeri 100 manages to turn. Interestingly, that Jagdpanzeri 100 has boosted their hit points with the durability device, but boy, did they look slow. Although it looks like they were caught in this kind of, like, dried riverbed here on this glacial map. Or should I say, maybe just runoffs. Maybe there's perhaps some glaciers around here, maybe just mountains. Maybe I'm exaggerating. This isn't like the, the Swedish map within that regard. But PC Massey is basically now showing you how, if you're an aggressive player and you're playing against inexperienced players who don't know how the armor on this thing works, how much you control them. Blocking 4,300 damage for a medium tank, as well as dealing 7,800 damage, they now find themselves in a 1 versus 5, where they have 900 hit points and the enemy has 6,500. So, lo and behold, a VZ-55 comes round, spamming gold, but PC Massey manages to avoid both of those shells. That's because people just don't know how this thing's armor works, and they think, whoa, it's a medium tank, it's over-angling, I should easily be able to shoot through its tracks and damage it. Well, how about nobody? As PC Massey shuts down the VZ-55, there's one tank inside the cap circle, and there's a CS-63 behind them who puts one into the back of the turret. So they're having to deal with literally all of the most competitive tanks in the game here, like the VZ-55, the CS-63, great shot there. PC Massey is using a Bond gun rammer, Bond vents and Bond vertical stabilizers to be able to improve this tank's gun handling as it is not great, especially when you combine with the accuracy. And I think this is one of the kinds of tanks that you don't want to sit still. You don't want to kind of expose the, the turret too much and you definitely don't want to become a, a stationary weak point for your opponents to be able to shoot at you. Because even if you're angled at 45 degrees, if they aim well and they hit the uh, the armor here, they can manage to penetrate it. So it's actually the upper plate that's the weak part on this vehicle. A bit like when you're aiming at an IS-7 from the side. All right, CS-63 caught in the wrong neck of the woods. But unfortunately for PC Massey, they do take a penetrating shot from the CS-63. That now means that they are down to 98 hit points against three top tier tanks. There's a Leopard, an E100, and a Jagdpanzer E100 on the enemy team. Who's going to be in the cap circle here? Is it going to be the Leopard? Is it going to be the E100? The Leopard could be on full health here, but they might have got spotted outside PC Massey's render distance, and yes, they did. PC Massey puts a shot into the top of the turret, also managing to high roll there, doing 345 damage and resetting the cap circle for 90. Now, PC Massey up to nine frags. Got a Radley Walters medal. Going for the uh, Pools medal now, if they can manage to pick up one more frag. The E100 on the enemy team was roughly about half health, as was the Jagdpanzer E100. 
And PC Massey is also trying to get the one that everybody wants, the Collar Banos Medal, for standing alone against at least five opponents. Although, 98 hit points versus 3,000 on the enemy team, this could still be really tough. And PC Massey has 10 heat rounds left, meaning they have to penetrate every single shell if they want to be able to deal that 3,000 damage, because good luck dealing damage with your two remaining high explosive rounds. So, I think the scene is set, and you can see this is going to be an incredibly exciting round. So, PC Massey, the Yakpanzer E100 there had 1,300, and I think it was 83 hit points. Now, with 320 alpha damage, you're going to deal 1,280. So, unless PC Massey is going to high roll, this could be fairly awkward. They've really got to hope that they can manage to destroy this E100 in four shots, so they can still have six shots left for the E100 on the enemy team. If they low roll, or they don't high roll, wasting five shells, meaning they've only got five left for the E100, and they'll have to deal with the 1,500 hit points on the E100, will leave very little room for error to be able to destroy the tier 10 German Heavy. So I think PC Massey has to, he's basically trying to figure out, is the E100 here? But you, you can't think now. In a one versus two, they could strengthen their position. PC Massey fires on the move, doing 359 hit points. And did you see there for a second, there was somebody in the cap circle. Oh no, the mother of all low rolls afterwards, the 269. Now means that PC Massey has to do 420 damage if they can even do that with the 320 this vehicle has. And so PC Massey is going to have to fire five times. Steady hand there, aiming at the weak point of the E100 Jagdpanzer. And now with five shots left, they've got to deal 1,568 to the enemy team. Now, that is tough stuff. Uh, if they manage to penetrate all shells and they don't low roll, they will be able to do it. Maybe it's going to come down to those two remaining high explosive rounds. This PC Massey is now over 11,000 damage dealt, 6,000 damage blocked, and 10 frags, showing you the dream scenario for the T22 medium. But it's going to be PC Massey versus an E100 in the cap circle here. So PC Massey is going to side scrape out, trying to bait this E100. But the E100, if they're firing high explosive anti-tank rounds, will still be able to just negate that well-angled armor. Remember, 70 degrees. PC Massey goes for the HE shell to be able to reset and... I bet you didn't see that coming. Oh my lord, the mother of all heartbreaks, boys and girls. I guess all of that ammunition didn't really matter. With a great interrupt there to protect the cap circle, once again, PC Massey wanted to lower the E100's hit points because they knew they needed all five of those heat rounds to be able to finish off the tier 10 German behemoth at the end of the game. But that E100 was done messing around. They didn't even fire the gold. They fired HE rounds to finish off the pesky troll of the T22 medium. This was just an incredible performance by PC Massey here. Just an absolute god tier game. The pools medal for destroying two thirds of the enemy team at tier 10. Defender medal for protecting that cap circle twice. A high caliber for a casual 1,000, uh, sorry, 11,395 damage dealt. Blocking enough damage to destroy this tank pretty much three times over. And they even managed to make credits as they fired majority APCR rounds before they started to run. They ran out of them with great marksmanship. And this was great marksmanship in this game. 44 shots fired, 43 hit, 38 pens. And PC Marcy it was just the ultimate heartbreak, dealing four times the damage of anyone else on their team and pretty much doing the rest of their team's damage combined. Showing you that the T22 is an absolute monster in the hands of a very capable player like PC Massey. Now, let me clarify, you deciding to spend XXX million credits on the T22 is not going to magic you to have games like this. This is quite a high skill cap tank to play. It's very powerful in the hands of an aggressive player who knows how to take chances, but I think it will probably fall apart in the hands of a player who doesn't know what they're doing. So buyer beware, results may vary. So all in all, is the T22 the best kind of medium tank to be able to get your hands on? Well, it gets a decent win ratio, although not nearly as good as the 907, but the caliber of players playing the T22 is actually significantly higher than the average playing the tech tree tanks, as you would expect for this rare vehicle. Interestingly, the win ratio difference on the T22 is quite poor, worse than the Object 140, but better than the K91 and the T62A, suggesting that even though reasonably good players are playing this tank, they don't really know what they're doing with it, or that their results are just not incredible. And that will come down to just the B-grade gun 
performance. The firepower on this tank is definitely more of a tier 9 than a tier 10. The lack of gun depression can really hold this back. And the fact that the armor is just really awful against heat, but so incredible against AP and APCR rounds, especially against tanks that don't really know how to deal with it. So my tips for you when you're shooting at a T22 medium is shoot the upper plate if they're trying to bait like this. Don't get baited into shooting the side armor unless you have high explosive anti-tank. If you do, you can manage to uh, punish the side of this vehicle. It means that the T22 medium must angle pretty much like this to have its optimal armor configuration. But as soon as you have heat and it doesn't angle like this, its lower plate becomes a bit of a weak point. Also, it does have some issues with the top of the turret against very large caliber guns, or if it's not using any of its gun depression on top against heat. But it is an absolute troll of a tank. I think it's good. I think in the hands of a great player, you'll do very well with this tank. And I think pff, it's, it's worth at least 6 million credits. I'd say it's probably worth 10. Would I pay 20 million credits for this tank? Ugh, that's a push. And that's because just because you've got a huge amount of credits, maybe that you've saved up as a nest egg from the holiday ops season, it's still roughly, even if you're a great player using a credit booster during holiday ops, takes about one hour to make a million credits. And at other times of the year, it's probably going to take the average player at least two if not three hours with credit boosts to get each million credits on an account so just be warned with the uh amount of auctions that are going to be coming up probably in 2024 every million credits that you bid is roughly about one to three hours of your life with premium tanks with a premium account with credit boosters playing so unless you really enjoy playing those premium tanks anyway just be careful with how you decide to spend your surplus credits. And a massive thank you to PC Massey for showing us all about the T22 Medium. You played an incredible game. This was an absolute heartbreak. I was rooting for you all the way to the end. And I guess GG to that pesky E100 on the enemy team for his three kills with his thousand damage as he destroyed our hero. And also... Did you see the CS63 on the enemy team? Managed to pick up seven frags for 9,000 damage. It was the battle of the Radley Walters medal there. I didn't see two incredible games by two incredible players. That's what you got to love to see. So thank you so much to you, PC Massey, for uploading your awesome replay onto the What Replays website for the community to enjoy. I definitely did. And I hope it helps some of you out there to make a decision about the auction for today. If it did, give the video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Let me know whether you're going to be bidding for the T22 medium or if you're going to be waiting for some of the new tanks that will be coming. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned as I'll be releasing a video pretty much at this time every day for the next five days to let you know about the auction and whether it's worth it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.